Hi everyone, it's Christine here from Ever After Paper Crafts, and I'm so sorry I've been a little bit sparse with my uh, videos the last week or so. This last week and next, this next coming week are going to be a little lighter on the video and the blogs um, that I do, just because my four-year-old, my Isaac, um, it will be starting school. He'll be starting kindergarten um, a week from Monday, so I just kind of wanted to take a little time off and spend some time with him and do some family things. But after that, I'll be back to full-time posting. At least four videos a week but I do have a video for you today and this is the card we're going to be working on the mermaid is from a new honeybee stamp set called swimming by and this is the stamp set it is so cute I love the mermaid the little turtle the little message in a bottle and then the different sentiments that you can combine to create whatever greeting that you would like so this is again this is the card and pay attention specifically to the background that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do in this video today so I created a watercolor kind of underwater scene and then I coated it with a beautiful silver pigmented uh, watercolor paint and so when you tilt it in the light it has this gorgeous shimmer and shine to it there's also a lot of glitter on that mermaid which I don't think that the camera is gonna pick up but I will have plenty of pictures on my blog and I will link to my blog in the description box of this video so again for this video I'm just gonna show you how I did that beautiful background there so let's go ahead and get started Started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is get some watercolor paper and I cut mine to um, <clears throat> an inch larger on each side to accommodate the tape. I just have a, a, a thick board here that I like to tape my project, my paper down on when I'm doing watercolor projects and that just helps eliminate or at least lessen the amount of warping that you get because even though it's watercolor paper, it's still paper and you might get some warping. So this really helps with that. And then I just used regular painter's tape to tape this down. I knew I wanted the background panel of my card to be a full um, A2 sized card front because I really wanted to show off that background and still have room for the sentiment and the large mermaid. So I went ahead and um, I would want, so in other words, for, for the front of the card, I wanted it to be a full A2 size front, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. So I cut this piece of Canson XO watercolor paper at uh, six and a half by five and a quarter, so an inch larger. And I have the uh, the textured side up. And let me just show you the difference really quick. I just want to pull this up for just a moment. If I have found my best results are when I have either coloring with zigs or doing actual watercolor painting. I find it best to have the textured side of your watercolor paper up. It's gonna be very hard to show on camera, but your watercolor paper, at least if you're using the Canson XL and many others, has two different sides. One side has little bits of pigment or um, bump, I guess you could say. I don't know how else to describe it. A little, It doesn't feel bumpy, but it has texture that looks raised on one side and the other side is smooth. Always tape it down so that the textured side is up, facing upwards. That's what I do and I have found that that works perfectly for me. So let me go ahead and, and tape this back down now. See if I, I think I should be able to reuse this tape. I should have, shouldn't have taped it down first because I really wanted to show you guys um, that just in case you're new working with watercolors. I have also found that when I do any watercolor painting or coloring with my zigs, um, I want that textured side face up. Okay, so I'm just taping this back down here. This is just standard um, painter's tape and it comes off very easily and it doesn't damage your paper. It's a low tack tape, but it's good enough to keep it down while we're painting. Okay, so for the background now, I'm going to be using my Gansy Tambi watercolor paints. This is the 36 uh, palette collection. I uh, You can get this on Amazon, very inexpensive. I think it's $26 for this entire palette, which is really, really lovely. And I love these paints. Now they don't have names of the colors in English, they're in Japanese. So as I use the colors, I will call out the numbers for you just in case you wanna make this just like mine. All right, I have a cup of water here that's off camera. And the paintbrush that I'm going to be using is a simple silver black velvet size eight uh, round uh, watercolor brush. This is my favorite. These are, this brand is my favorite for watercoloring, but quite honestly, for this technique, you can use any paintbrush that you have at home. All right, so I'm just wetting my paintbrush now, and I'm getting the paper wet with a clean, wet paintbrush. Just getting it wet so that when we put the paint on, it's going to spread a little bit and do some of the work for us. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put some green down, and I'm going to use number 58. 
and it's just a fun little lighter green color and I'm just gonna put some wherever I want there's no magic to this uh, just put the paint wherever the heck you want it and also there's no magic in putting it down you can blot it down or just you know smooth it down like I'm doing with the paintbrush here there's no magical technique or anything like that uh, regarding how you put the paint down just put it down any way you like I used blue purple and green for this for this background here. So next what I'm going to do is grab some purple and I'm going to be using number 38. I'm gonna put it here in this top right corner. And then I'm going to also put some uh, with a slightly lighter or darker rather color of purple down here. And this is number 139. They're very similar so it really doesn't matter. You could just use one of them if you wanted to. Now I'm gonna get into my blues and I'm using number 62 for a blue. And we're just gonna put this around here and a little bit over here as well. Just darken that up just a little bit. And now I want one more color of green. So I'm going to dip into number 56, which is a very dark green. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and put that in some of the white spaces that remain, like so. All right. Now I'm just gonna go back again and go over what I've just done, just to darken up the colors just a little bit. You could hit this with your heat tool to really build that color up, which I've done in other videos in the past. But to save time and to show you how you can do this a little bit quicker if you're kind of in a time crunch, I'm just going to do it very quickly. So I've just kind of mapped out in my head which colors I put where, and all I'm doing now is putting the same color on top in the different spaces where I already put it. So that's all I'm doing, just to darken. And you can see how much darker now the color is. And uh, it's really gonna stand out a, a whole lot more when our project is completed. And I'm just going back now to the very first color we used, which is that number 58, and just putting it down one more time over where we already put it, like so. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get our heat gun. And it's going to be loud for just a little bit here, guys, but we want to make sure for this technique to work and to get that really shiny look, we want to get this nice and dry. And you may want to take some paper towel um, and blot just a little bit where there's some excess water. Just blot it just a little bit um, as you're drying along, just to clean that up just a little bit, and it'll dry a little quicker as well. So we just want to get this nice and dry. Now, of course, you don't have to use a heat gun if you don't want to. You can just let this sit here and air dry and go do something else and come back later once it's dry. Um, or you could, you know, hit it with a, ha a hair dryer. It might take a little bit longer with a hair dryer. They don't get as hot as heating tools do, but you could still use a hair dryer to get this paint to dry. Just dabbing this with a paper towel here. And don't worry, I've got some white splashes here. That is okay. We're gonna fix all of this in a moment with this fun um, shimmery technique that we're going to do. So I've got this nice and dry with my heat tool. Now I'm going to take my paintbrush. It's nice and clean because I have cleaned it in this water here. And I just have a little bit of water on it. And I'm just going to go around and just with that clean water, and you might wanna go back and you know keep it clean. Make sure you keep the bristles of the brush clean. But I'm just going through here. And as you can see where the, the colors, um, there's kind of like lines that separate the colors. I'm just taking the clear, clean water and going over those lines just to blend it. This is just a trick I learned as I was just, I just kind of learned this by accident really. And I'm like, oh, hey, that, that actually makes that line between colors much, much smoother um, and not quite as dramatic of a line in between the colors. It just kind of helps blend the different, uh, so it's a nice blend in other words, from one color to another and it doesn't look quite as choppy. And so now I'm going to put just a little bit more color down here. I've lost a little bit of the blue so I'm gonna put a little bit more blue right down there and a little bit down in that area as well. Now we're gonna hit this with the dryer one more time and get it nice and dry and then we'll do our fun shimmery. I'll show you how to make it all nice and silver shim with that silver shimmery paint. So bear with me here as I get this nice and dry. But that, that clean water in between the different colors really does help less soften the lines in between the colors. And then once we put the silver pigment paint on top, it's really gonna make a difference. And you're not gonna see harsh transitions anymore from one color to the next. It's just a really fun technique that, like I said, I really did learn on accident and it works perfectly. This is 
very similar to how you would create a galaxy background, except you'd use more sky colors if you wanted to. And instead of the silver we're going to put on, you'd put black. So keep that in mind too. This is a technique that can be used for all different sorts of cards. You can just create a random background with it for just an interest to your cards. You can do starry night galaxy backgrounds, underwater backgrounds, whatever you want. So we're done with our Gansai Tampi watercolor paints. So I'm going to put those aside and I'm going to grab these Kiritaki Starry Colors pigment paint set. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this white gold here, only that color. And it actually turns out to be a really pretty silver. So these are very pigmented paints, so you have to get them very wet. So you're going to have to go back to your water cup quite a few times to get that paint flowing so it actually attaches to your brush. But once it does, you just want to get quite goop it on your brush. And now you're going to, just like as if, you, if you've done a galaxy background before, and how we'd go in with the black, you're going to do the same thing, but with the silver. So you're going to go on top of what you've already done. Trust me, it's going to work. I know a lot of people are like, but wait, I don't want to ruin what I've already created. And I was the same exact way. But once I gave it a try, I was so impressed with the results that it's just so worth doing because the results are absolutely gorgeous guys I promise so I'm just taking this silver and going right over what we've already done but this is why you really have to have this underlying paint completely dry first otherwise you're gonna get a muddy mess so make sure that your underlying scene is completely dry before you add this silver paint so, and I, we did that with our heat gun, but again, you can just leave it to air dry or you could use your hair dryer, whatever you have at home that you um, can use. So now it doesn't look shimmery right now very much because it's wet. So let me break back out my heat gun here and I'll show you how, how when it's dry, it looks absolutely gorgeous. So shimmery and shiny and silver pearly. It's like a sil pearly silver undertones to this beautiful under the sea background that we've created it is so fun and so pretty and really just something i was honestly just playing around with so i definitely encourage you if you have some time in your craft room pull out your brushes pull out some paints and play because i think you will be surprised at least i was very surprised at what i was able to create just honestly playing around and not paying much attention at all all right so that's good Let's, let me now pull this up to the camera again, and you'll be, look at that. Now there's still some wet spots, but you get the idea. Look up here, how beautiful and silver and beautiful that is. Oh my goodness, I just think that is so pretty. It adds so much to your card. And all we did was coat over what we'd already created with some white gold pearlescent paint. And here's the finished card, guys. It really is that simple. How beautiful is that? And what a gorgeous card it makes. So just to talk you through finishing this card up, of course, you'd color the mermaid. I'm going to do a second video here in a moment to show you how I colored the mermaid. I didn't want to put it in this video because it would be too long. I used this sentiment here that says swimming by to say I love you and I embossed it in silver embossing powder and put some silver foil paper behind it just to really bring out that silver that we created in our background. And then the little message in a bottle I thought would be cute. The, the message could say I love you, something like that. I just thought that was cute to have in her hand and then I have a little turtle here. And then I just added some sequins and that's it. That background really is, you know, the big focal point of your car, that and the image. And so it didn't really need a lot of embellishment. I did put a little bit of silver twine behind the I love you. Um, just again, to, to emphasize that silver in the final card. And this all fits, of course, on a standard A2 size card, five and a half by four and a quarter. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Again, here's the background that we just created on camera. It was so easy to do. It took just a couple minutes to do it. And you can start to see that shimmer there. And of course, when it's completely dry, it will all just shimmer and it'll have this beautiful silver overlay to it, just as you can see on the finish card. So I hope that you love this and we'll give this a try. Stay tuned for part two of this video where I will show you how to color the mermaid. Thanks so much for stopping by guys and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.